Uh, whenever you're all ready, could you talk me through what you've built? Sure. So this is our dog, uh, Coot Humper. It's a robotic, uh, robotic brother of Pico. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> and uh, so uh, our goal for this project is to build a robotic quadruped that is uh, mimicking a real dog. Uh, and uh, we want to make it not only functional, but also expressive and interactive, realistic. Uh, so, um, uh, so it can do poses uh, and uh, uh, motion like normal dogs, as well as even uh, following uh, people around. So the original inspiration uh, of the, uh, the uh, model itself is uh, based on the Boston Dynamics spot. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, the additional following feature is actually from the uh, uh, seeing eye dogs really in real time. And, uh -huh. uh, uh, in this case, we are uh, taking a step back. Instead of having the dog guide a human, we're having uh, <laughs> our human guide the dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can go over the hardware a bit. So first we have four DC motors in here. Each one of these wheels are connected to hobby motors hidden uh -huh. inside the kneecaps. And on each shoulder joint, we have servos. So these are positional servos, and they control the dog. They allow it to do poses like paw, sit, and stay. Okay. And then on the outside, its eyes are two ultrasonic sensors. This is what we use for our following uh, algorithm that we'll talk later. And here we have a mini OLED display. Um, we use this to display emotions. At first it was for debugging, but now we use it for cute displays of emotions. Uh huh. And additionally, we have a battery pack, so he's portable and wireless. Cool. Now, looking inside the guts of Cucumber, we can see he also has a speaker and a speaker amplifier. So we put the amplifier there because the speaker was initially too like quiet, and now it's a bit too loud. Okay. <laughs> um, we also have two motor drivers, so these control the uh, continuous motors down here. They allow them to drive forward and backwards, and they're controlled by PWM. And the brains of everything is on this Pi Pico W. Very nice. With a custom solder board connector. Cool. The way that we control them is we have a website. He's hosting this, or the Pico W is hosting this. Um, we can control all the poses. We can get him to do his little sounds, as well as switching to follow mode and controlling the DC motors. So. Wow. That's the end. Uh, so I can get him to stand. I can get him to sit. And you'll notice the OLED also changes to match his little pose. Can give me paw. <laughs> oh my gosh. He <laughs> <laughs> can lay down. He can stretch. He can pee. He <laughs> 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 <You> can poo. <laughs> upward dog pose as well as the upward dog stretch. Wow. And he can bark. He can growl. And he can howl. Warning, this is loud. Nope, hit the wrong one. For the record, that the record is... it kind of sounds like a husky howl, but we have been you know, told it sounds like a moo. <laughs> um, he also has manual motors, so I can have him move towards you, as well as a stay button, which just stops the motors right away. Wow! So he can move this way, I can make him turn so he's going the wrong way. Um, yeah. Those are both just sliders on the website that just let you control that. Oh. So you're controlling this whole thing from that iPad there. Okay. That is fabulous. The manual mode stuff. Uh huh. Um, yeah. And we have and second mode. We have our second mode. If you want to, you guys want to switch it, and I can. We have our second mode, which is like our following mode with our little helper phone, where he can essentially just follow. Um, He's using his uh, display for this. Let's see if I can. Um, and his goal is just kind of to follow what's in front of him based on what's closer and stuff like that. So, oh, so it's differential sonar? Mm hmm. Exactly. So we have him where he's left, where he's right. If he's a certain distance away, he'll stop. If he's too close to something, he'll bark and back away. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and he can just kind of follow you through. This is like a kind of narrow passageway for doing this. Wow. So follow me if I start turning, sort of. You can know, bring him to sort of follow me through the turn, unless he sees the chair. <laughs> In case he won't. <laughs> that is too cool. Mm -hmm. And the following algorithm has three processes. 
where the uh, B first is, is it would just go straight forward if it sees an object that's far away. Uh huh. If it is uh, one side is uh, significantly closer than the other side, it will go turn towards it. And if it if it gets to a, a good distance, it will just stop. Uh huh. And if it's too close, it will bark and be mad at you. Let's see. Can I make him bark? <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's so neat. And so, do I understand correctly that the Pico W in there is acting as a um, access point that you're connecting to with the iPad and it's serving a website? Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. Yeah, so the Pico W is what's hosting this and then we're just connecting and using it to just give it commands for update variables. Very nice. Yeah, you wanna switch back to manual? Sure. So you can also switch back to manual. And then everything. <clears throat> cool. And now everything would be shall be controlled. And let's see. So mode. I can see your screen and him right now. So you, could you sit or push like sit or something? Sure. <laughs> yes. I can do pie again. <laughs> That's so funny. A bit more about the servos. They're controlled by PWM. So they're using a 50 hertz cycle. And depending on the time high of one millisecond to two milliseconds, it will go to a certain angle. So in our C code, we basically just use the map function to adjust the duty cycle of each servo. It's very endearing. Get a shot of his face. Yeah, give me a paw. <laughs> it's really nice. Awesome demo. Thank you all.